Good morning, Auburn. Our reading for this morning is taken from a quote from E.G. White, and it's from Ministry of Healing, page 503. We need constantly a fresh revelation of Christ, a daily experience that harmonizes with his teachings. High and holy attainments are within our reach. Continual progress in knowledge and virtue is God's purpose for us. His law is a echo of his own voice, giving to all the invitation, come up higher, be holy, holier still. Every day, we may advance in perfection of Christian character. Those who are engaged in service for the master need an experience much higher, deeper, broader, than many have yet thought of having. Many who are already members of God's great family knows little of what it means to be all his glory and to be changed from glory to glory. Amen. I guess it's my turn. You know how you can tell whether or not you're being blessed by good musicians? How quiet the audience gets. When I talk, you all talk out there. That's okay. <laughs> but when good musicians perform, all four of them, it's really quiet in here. Thank you, all. We are in the middle of a series of sermons taken from 2 Peter chapter 1. We've seen that we are charged by God to gain a knowledge of Jesus. And we have seen thus far, for that to occur, we must grow in a Christ-like character. This growth requires diligence on our part to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to acquire eight specific attributes. Turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll look at those again. So I want you to be in 2 Peter chapter 1, but this time we're going to start in verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want us to always remember that the faith we have is a gift given to us by our Heavenly Father. You can't generate faith by yourself. Faith is a gift from God. He has acted in our best interest. Now the next question is, what do we do with that faith? Look at verse 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. You and I are to cooperate with the Holy Spirit on that trip we call sanctifications that we might grow into the child that God has asked us to be. So to put this in simple, everyday, non-theological uh, construct... You, are re, you receive a gift from your work for a family past the Disney World. You still have to drive to Disney World to enjoy the resort. God has given you the faith, but it doesn't stop there. Now there's some work on our part to grow and enjoy the gift that God has given us. And we are to add to our faith virtue. This is a hard word in Scripture. Virtue is a word we find only five times in Scripture. Paul uses it once. Peter uses it four times. That's it. It's translated as goodness 
in the New International Version. It's translated as moral excellence in the New American Standard Version. And if you look at different commentaries across the range of theology, they define this Greek word to mean excellence, courage, fortitude, vigor, or energy. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to add to my faith yet. But it's this thing we call virtue. So if you do a little more digging, you will find that the Greeks themselves use their word to describe a mental excellence, a moral quality. Seems to represent for them a concept of excellence in all phases of their lives. Seems to represent this idea of excellence and it seems to represent my effort in obtaining that excellence. So let's see if we can put some of these ideas together and figure out what it is I'm supposed to be adding to my faith. Virtue has the connotation of excellence, a moral perfection, a growth as a Christian, and my striving to obtain that. So the virtue is not something you go to the store and buy. Virtue is describing a process that we all are engaged in to being a better Christian. Virtue is the quality of striving for ex excellence in our faith-based relationship with God. So why is there this demand for virtue? Why does Peter tell us that after I get the faith from God, I'm supposed to add this thing called virtue? I'm supposed to add this excellence, this striving to be better. Why is that so important? A simple way of looking at it is, without virtue, faith will soon die. It's kind of like getting a block of ice. You leave it on the front porch, it ain't ice long, whether you're in Florida or in Georgia. So this faith that God has given us, we got to add this striving for excellence to it, or the faith goes away. When you add this striving for excellence, our faith becomes this dynamic force in our lives. Appropriate works will flow out of someone who is striving to be a better Christian. Find James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Land in verse 26. James chapter 2 verse 26. For as the body... Without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. James is stressing that apart from appropriate works, genuine faith won't exist. You have to kind of combine the faith with this striving to do and be a better Christian. Yes, we can intellectually understand what the Bible says. We can understand doctrine. We can understand prophecy. But a mere understanding isn't what God wants from us. He wants us to base our relationship with him on faith that he provides. And then he wants us to spend our energy being better at that relationship. You and I are to grow in our knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let me see if I can illustrate this. Think of like Abraham in the Old Testament. How many people think he had faith? How many people aren't listening? Okay. God said, go. I'll tell you where on the way. You don't talk about having faith. No GPS. 
No, Rand McNally map for those of us who are a little older. <laughs> Just go. I'll tell you. He had faith. And then he put his faith into practice. And he did what God said and got better at doing what God said. How about Rahab? You talk about someone who had faith. She's not one of the chosen people. She's not even a moral person. But God gave her some faith. And she acted on that faith. Okay, spies, come on in. I'm sure I won't die. <laughs> okay, you got a promise that my family will be okay when you take over the city. Faith leads to appropriate works. And it's through those works we add the virtue that God wants us to have as we grow into the children he wants us to be. Our discipleship requires the same as Abraham's discipleship, Rahab's discipleship, or any other character you want to call out from the pages of Scripture. Jesus taught his disciples to strive for excellence, the definition of virtue. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Therefore, Jesus says, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, Satan gets us all wrapped around the axle on what this verse doesn't say. Jesus is not talking about you're going to be sinless. That's not what he's talking about. He's describing Christian maturity that we're a little bit better at this thing called being a child of God tomorrow than we are today. It's this growth process we've been talking about. That's what he's describing in Matthew 5, 48. This perfection is when, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we begin to think more and act more and feel more like Jesus would if he was here with us. That's the perfection we're talking about. And quite honestly... Jesus is the only person who has the right to demand his disciples to make that sort of an effort. Find Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. Hebrews 10, verse 12, but this man, referring to Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstools. Jesus, who died for our sins, who allowed us to become a child of God, can now tell us what that role entails. And it means taking the gift of faith that God gives each of us and add to that this thing called virtue, this striving to, for excellence, this attempt at being better tomorrow with the help of the Holy Spirit than I am today. Forgot to change the page, sorry. In addition to paying the price for our sins and allowing us to become his disciples, Jesus also made sure that there would be functions or offices in his church so all of us can become perfect. Find Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 11. Ephesians 4, 11. And he, Jesus, himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. And he gave those functions, according to verse 12, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, 
till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. You and I have been given faith. We're told to add to that virtue, this striving for improvement, this striving for excellence. And God ensures that he has put around all of us those people that need to be there to help us to accomplish what he asks us to do. You're not in this alone. Good thing because I'd have fallen by the wayside long ago. But it's equally as wrong to think that, okay, I'm saved, I'm done. Yes, you are saved through grace. And that's just the beginning of the journey. I got my ticket to Disney World. Okay, I'll just sit here at home and enjoy it. No one would do that. I'm going to plan the trip. I'm going to pack the car. I'm going to go to the ATM and get some money. <laughs> and then I'm going to drive down there. And then I'm in the park itself. Ooh, this is cool. And then I got to get in the line. There's always a line. Not only do I have to get in the line, but then I got to keep moving forward for the two and a half hours till I get to the front of the line where I enjoy my 35 second Space Mountain ride. <laughs> We're not the smartest of people. We're really not. But just because we have the faith doesn't mean it's over. That's just the beginning. And we're supposed to add to this. This idea of virtue, this striving for improvement, this effort to be better tomorrow than we were today. So how do you develop this thing called virtue? How do you grow and be better tomorrow than you were today? Well, find 2 Timothy chapter 3. I shared this verse with you yesterday. I think yesterday, last week. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Scripture is given so that we can have virtue. Assuming you read the scriptures. You know, this thing called virtue is really a fun thing to watch. And I find it interesting if you study the life of Paul that he thought this excellence in discipleship was the entire purpose of his ministry. Find Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. Paul says in Colossians 1, 28, Him, Jesus, we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man complete in Christ Jesus. Complete, virtuous, not just an intellectual understanding that he's our savior, but then like that first century group of disciples, implementing the word of God into their lives and living what God asks them to do. You and I are to add virtue to our faith. We do that through scripture. We do that by studying the lives of people who've gone before, by looking at Paul or Abraham. And how did they do it? And I'm so thankful that we get warts and all when we look at those guys. You know, they stubbed their toes and Abraham lies about his wife and all sorts of things. But you and I are to rely on this book to help us be better tomorrow than we are today. Amen. And what happens when we spend time? In this book. Well the book tells you. <laughs> Psalms 1. 1 through 3. Psalms 1. 1 through 3. 
Okay, here's my one aside for the day. may not be the only one, but it's the first one. Psalms 1 was my very first sermon I ever preached on my birthday in 1997. And I still have those notes. I don't have the courage to look at them often, but I... No. Okay. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters, I'm sorry, rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in due seasons, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. We add this instruction to the faith God has given us, and we will begin the journey of adding virtue to our Christian walk. One of the best ways of learning is to observe those who have gone before. You want to develop a young person's mind? Make them read biographies. Any and all biographies. So, who should we emulate? Well, that's good, but he's perfect and I'm not. So I'm going to pick another person. Find Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, look at verse 9. Paul says in Philippians 4, 9, The things which you learned and received and heard... And saw in me, these do. Maybe Paul would be a good example for me to emulate. I mean, scriptures say so. With the help of the Holy Spirit, wherever I am in my journey of sanctification, I can look at what Paul did. And I can see that he does something I don't do. And maybe with the help of the Holy Spirit, I can add that component to my life. And I will be adding virtue to my faith. Paul kind of helps us because he describes his own striving for excellence. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not that I have already obtained. Okay, so he's not perfect, but he's adding virtue. Not that I have already obtained or am already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That's the process of sanctification. That's the process of adding virtue to your faith. Forget what lies behind. Both those things you think you have done well, because if you rest on your laurels, you usually crush them. And don't allow the mistakes of your past to keep you from trying. How many times did Edison try to invent the electric light bulb and failed? Anybody know? 3,000 attempts. 3,000 times of going, oh, that didn't work. You know what the final filament was that worked? Anybody know? Good, then I can make this up. Carbonized bamboo. Not the first thing I would have thought of. Not the first thing he thought of either. He tried 2,999 other things. But he didn't let the mistakes of the past stop him from trying to move forward. I don't care how bad you were yesterday. I don't care how bad you are today. You can be better tomorrow. He also says, then I press on. 
Never giving up. Be like the marathon runner. I told you I ran a marathon once. It seemed an appropriate idea at the time. My younger brother and I are in Charlotte, North Carolina, which was an advantage to me because I was training at 8,000 feet of elevation. I lived in the Air Force Academy at the time, and we were running down at about, you know, like 1,100 feet. So my oxygen system was a lot better than Michael's, my poor brother. But he was also six years younger, and he finished before me, and I finished, and then we went to the reception, and we got our little gold medal. Then we went to the hotel, we showered, and then my mom and dad, who came to watch us, which I thought was really stupid, they see you cross the line after sitting there for four and a half hours. Okay. What was the course like? Okay, we'll show you. So we drove the course. This is about six and a half hours now after we had started the race. And at about mile 24, there's this truck with all these lights and about five people walking behind the truck. And in front of the truck was this 86-year-old guy still running his marathon. Didn't break any records, but he also never gave up. He kept pressing on. We all got his program. We all knew his name. It was kind of cool. Find Hebrews chapter 12. Pressing on, Paul says. Never giving up, Paul says. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Sanctification. Adding virtue. Never giving up. So a final thought or two about the demonstration of virtue. Does our daily walk with God suggest we are striving for excellence? Or are we just going through the motions? Does our daily walk with Christ indicate to ourselves, to God, and to others we are adding virtue? Or are we just going through the motions? Many of you know I was the left fullback of the high school state champions of soccer my senior year in high school. We had a coach that I despised. Because he made us do it right every single time. But coach, this is just practice, we would say. And he would say, as you practice is how you will play. We were so mad at him constantly. Because the punishment when you lipped off, like most of us did, was to run a five-mile lap. I ran them slowly, <laughs> thinking that I would miss the wind sprints at the end of practice. He was waiting for me. We are supposed to improve daily because how we live daily is how we live daily. And God doesn't say, practice down here. I'll be here in 30 years. We'll see how you're doing. We're a Christian 24 hours a day, every day. So are we seeking excellence in our relationship with Jesus? Are we reading his word daily? Are we listening to what it says? Are we praying without ceasing? Are we having dialogue with our mentor? Or do we just wait to hear what the pastor has to say? And go home and do my own thing. Are we seeking excellence in our service to God? Ooh. This is getting a little too close to home for some of you. 
See, Christianity isn't coming to church Saturday morning, paying some money, and then complaining about everybody else. Some people think that's their job. I've yet to find complaining as a spiritual gift. How are we doing at excelling in our service to God? Are we developing the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit has given each of us? Do we even know what our Holy Spirit gifts are? Am I developing them? Am I using them to advance God's kingdom? When we add virtue to our walk, our progress will be evident to others. Find 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 13. This is Paul giving his final counsel to one of his young protégés. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 13. Till I come give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Read the Bible, he says. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands by the, whatever that word is. Okay. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your process, progress may be evident to all. See, too many of us think religion is that thing we do half of a day, once a week, and then we can go back and live our regular life. We think it's somehow possible to have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. I mean, that's really uncomfortable. You go around life like this. If we are adding virtue, it will be obvious to others. Do our interests in the ministries of the church show we're striving for excellence? Do we use opportunities to increase our own faith? One of the new people on the leadership team this year shared with me that they didn't think they were qualified. Many of you have that feeling. Well, I'm not good enough to be. I know because I had that feeling. Karen and I are at Fort Walton Beach. We've been baptized a whole four months now. And the congregation says, you're an officer in the Air Force. You're in charge of the building project. I go, what's a building project? I went to this senior saint Happened to be a military guy. You kind of know him after a while. You can pick him up real quick. And I go up to him. I go, what do you think? You think I should be the building chairperson? He says, Jeff, here's the rule. And I gave this rule to the person who said, I don't think I'm qualified. He said, when the Holy Spirit asks you to do a job, do the best you can do. The worst is they won't ask you next year. <laughs> they probably wish they hadn't asked me next year. When you jump in and do what you've been asked by the Holy Spirit to do, guess what it does to your faith? Do we attend Bible studies offered at the church? Do we make use of occasions to encourage others? If we're adding virtue to our public walk of faith, we'll be an example worthy of others to emulate. Kind of like Paul said, he was worthy of our emulation because he tried to pattern himself after Jesus. You go, but pastor, I'm not there yet. I got so many things in my life that just are, they're not going away, and I'm not there yet. I don't want to be the example to somebody else. The story is this 87-year-old lady wanted to be a piano teacher for kids. Her husband goes, you just started taking lessons last week. What makes you think you can be a piano lesson to a teacher to a kid? The lady says, I just have to be one lesson ahead of them. <laughs> We're all 
sinners. We've all fallen short. That's not the question. The question is, are you going to add virtue to your faith? Or not? The Christian who adds virtue to their faith does not remain static. If you're the same person you are, were, if you are the same person you were, you're not growing. The person who adds virtue to their faith will not be content with their current level of faith, service, or sanctification. They will want to be more like Jesus tomorrow than they are today. To grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, let us seek to add to the faith God gave us the virtue he asks us to demonstrate. Closing hymn is 625, 625. Let's all stand as we sing, 625. <clears throat> Higher ground. And pressing on toward higher ground. All four stanzas. Seen on the upward way. Father, we thank you that you've called us to be your children. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the gift of faith and that you've given us the means by which we can add virtue to that faith. Send your Holy Spirit to each of us, Lord, that we might understand what you have asked us to do. 
Help us to rely on the Holy Spirit to provide us guidance and power to do that which you have asked us to do. And Lord, we ask that Jesus could come soon to take us home. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.